a website called All About the Tea. It's all, all about the tea that during the fight. Yeah. Uh, utility in a marriage, not, you know, where's the love? Where's the understanding? Like you said, this is your wife. Right. She's one of three of your children. Dude, what is he doing? Um, well, I'm glad I'll, she was able to get that gag order because you can't be telling her medical. I think that's what probably sealed the deal is when that, when he spilled mm -hmm. that information, like people, she shouldn't have to walk around being shamed because she right. chose to not proceed. That's her right. That's her body. And that's her business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But for him to be, I'm telling Martel, let me tell you something. That karma ain't gonna be good. I don't, I don't wish it on nobody, mm -hmm. but he's gonna have to deal with that because guess what? Everybody knows what type of man he is right, right now, now on the okay. internet. So let's see if he can find somebody as loyal as Melody. Again, they're gonna be coming right after his bag and they're gonna suck his ass dry. Huh? And them five, six, seven, eight kids. I'm sorry. You know, and because mm -hmm. I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm oh, and, and I know I'm gonna catch a lot of backlash for this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The only type of woman that's gonna be impressed by Martel is gonna be one of them podunk country ass bitches in Alabama some damn way because <laughs> <laughs> come to Miami, Atlanta, New York, LA, Houston, or anywhere like that, and anybody give his ass a time of day, he is only somebody. To them. Yeah. yeah. To them. It what? reminds me of that Tyler Perry movie, Why Did I Get Married? Remember that? Um, Jill Scott, her character, and her husband treated her like shit. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and yeah. He was cheating with her friend that was the slim, pretty girl. And then, you know, you saw how that ended. He got his karma coming to him. I mean, I mean, I don't wish it on nobody, but it's no. just a wow. You can't expect to go around treating people this way and for that not to be reciprocated. You understand? So, like, it's going to happen. Like, women are going to see him. They're going to probably look at a bag or a little bit of bag that he got. But a lot of men don't understand. It's because of your wife. It is how you got that position. You mm -hmm. do it all by yourself. Your wife right. is at home taking care of them children. She is allowing you to go out there and grow. Absolutely. And let's let's state for the record, the bag really isn't that big. I mean, it's not. The tax records <laughs> had got revealed. He has four children and five children now, and everybody know own don't pay. Okay. Well, what does the tax record say? What does I, it say? I, I forgot the number, but it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing impressive after you divided by five children. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. They're in debt. Yeah. They have lean. They have tax liens, Tasha. Point to they take came out. One, one back to school shopping for five kids <laughs> is gonna wipe their ass that, out. That's pretty okay. serious. You know, they go all gonna be dig doing digital in their pajamas. Okay. <laughs> Look, you were digital later than paper dollars. You, re you, you, you really don't bring much to the table. Yeah. You did not. Uh, yeah. a, a baggage. You were only, yeah. married, and I'm not trying to be funny or downplay him, but only a bird brain basic bitch would be impressed by him. There's nothing there. Now, Daniva, after mm -hmm. Heavenly's interview, you did a reaction video, mm -hmm. and it took me out. We always take us oh, out. Oh my goodness! I was sliding out the seat to that Jaguar, right, Jay? I was. <laughs> that was a good one too. But you really broke the situation down in simplest terms. You were like, "It's like a plate of food." Melody was the chicken, and Ariane was the side dish. She was just the coleslaw. <laughs> That's pretty much. You called the coleslaw. Yeah. That's pretty much. And now and we sometimes eat coleslaw, and we sometimes don't. It depends on how hungry we are. And and now that melody is gone, <laughs> the, the 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 bulk of the meal is gone. Can't nobody get full off a of coleslaw alone. And so, yeah. in that analogy, I was simply implying that okay, after the absence of melody, and you know, y'all settle down for six months or a year or whatever. That appetite for that chicken and potatoes is going to come back, and you cannot transform coleslaw into chicken. You can't. You can't. Mm -mm. You can't. And, and Martell is used to a certain type of woman because Melody has set that standard. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So he's not even going to go public unless you can be equal to or better than his wife. 
-hmm. And it doesn't even matter if the woman is going to burn him dry with them kids. He just, he's about status. Mm -hmm. He is. Yes. It's about how much can I get? How much can I take? You know what I'm saying? He just wants to look good. He wants to have it all. And it just, see what having it all. And I hate going. to say this. I hate to say this. But Melody is a certain type of woman. She's professional. She's classy. You can take her in any room and she'll fit in. Arion is not that girl. Here's what I don't understand about them. Because from my understanding, you know, they are the ones who came to Carlos with the idea and they helped produce the show. I don't understand how y'all sat down at the creative meeting with papers and diagrams and stuff and said, okay, our storyline is going to be you cheating on me. Mm. I, you know, I just don't know. I, I, I still can't wrap my head. And then it's funny because then y'all played with this notion and then it took it, it took legs of its own and it's grown and grown and gotten bigger and bigger and it's just I don't know a, a, a part of me feels like you know maybe their marriage would have been salvageable had they not played with it for reality TV right um, I mean but we see this happen all the time on reality TV not mm -hmm. not every couple is able to survive because you gotta understand yeah. like it's, it's easier to deal with your spouse in private and not having all the opinions of the world because you you got an influence, you got a machine behind you telling you your man ain't shit or th this is what we see. And so you start to believe that, especially if you open up your phone and that's all you see it in the comments. Oh, he this, he that, he doing this, he doing that. So you can't even really try to forget about the situation and move on because you're constantly reminded of it every day. And I think, honestly, reality mm -hmm. stars need to take this. I mean, they should have been taking it as uh, serious. Like, look, you, we've seen this happen before. Like, Porsche. I, I, you know, Porsche I and also, Dennis. <laughs> I also think the Holtz, both Melody and Martell, owe their friend group apologies. Because, in short, the friend group fell apart because people making comments and stuff about the status of their relationship and him cheating. And then they came back after that reunion, like that ain't going on. We the power couple. We the power couple. We doing this. Da, 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 da. Your man cheating too. And it's like, lo and behold, the shit that y'all was fronting, trying to act like wasn't going on was going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And y'all were mad and deflecting at us because y'all couldn't get y'all own shit together. But the whole while everyone knew that this was going on. They were trying to save that that piece of check. That you know, and they, and they were. I just I just think something needs to be said to the fact that y'all tried to make everybody else seem like they was crazy about y'all's situation, and all in all, it was exactly what they called. Yeah. Right. I you mean, because they said word around the block was Martel was out there before the show started. Right. That's what I was gonna say. So you know how Alabama they talk now. Yeah. yeah. Miss Bill yeah. down the street know what's going on. I mean, in Huntsville, <laughs> Huntsville is really but this big. It's not the I big know. city. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Everybody know your business. They're going to tell you who coming out the back door, the front door, the side, who is in the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. Who had done came up? Well, everybody knew he was seeing her before they started filming, before the show started. The show only highlighted the problems that existed in their marriage. That's all it did. So I would be curious now, though, to know what creative direction the show takes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I imagine, you know, the foundation of the show is Melody and Martell. They are the center. And, they and are. Everyone else is an offshoot of them. So I'm curious to know, does next season look like um, Melody has her own storyline. Martel has their his own storyline, and we only see them when they swap the kids at the Waffle House. Like mm -hmm. we them in. I think the producers are gonna be messy and play that divorce. Oh yeah, they're gonna. Yeah. Play that. I don't think yeah. it's gonna be a separate storyline until they say so. You don't get to just go off like that. And we built the entire foundation of the show yeah. on you. We're gonna watch this thing dissolve. To the end, and we're gonna watch it to the point where you know you how you know you ain't quite over your uh your spouse. It can be a year you divorce and you see your spouse with somebody else you don't like or you don't want to with your kids. That's probably mm -hmm. what it's gonna be like. They're gonna milk it and see here's what, milking them out. Here's what's funny because I've talked to production and I know that Arian being on the show is um it won't happen without Mel's approval, mm -hmm. right? Right. I'm curious to know. 
what it looks like if let's just say they explore male dating which i don't foresee her doing anytime soon with, with four damn kids mm -hmm. but if she begins dating then does he then have the right to bring people around or bring arian on the show you know i've said this before in one of my videos and i'm like i understand how melody would not want to share her platform with arian right like you're not going to take my man and come on a platform that i created to get fame and notoriety, but follow me here. Bringing her into the equation strengthens the show. It does. And mm -hmm. it does. Of the show. So my philosophy is: don't miss out on a million dollars trying to block her from eighty thousand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. And I'm but I'm gonna like, be honest with you, Ariana. Good point. Will make Melody look weak. She, she will. will. Yeah, she yeah. from the streets. You gotta understand, Melody yeah. ain't from the streets. Yeah, and you know, you know how the fan base is. They like them street bitches now. They really do. They, they really do. do. Fuck it, Daniva. Why are you not sharing? <laughs> Baby, I'm gonna be fucking these oxtails up. Shout out to all my Man, listen, I'm on my vegan diet. Y'all gonna leave me alone. Mm. Yeah, me too, Tasha. I'm right here with you. I got to lose this gut, child, for real. It's my baby, 16 months old. It ain't no excuse. Is Bob One's food good? Is it really Bob good? Bob One's food is amazing. It's just okay. Food. okay. I hear a lot about it, but he don't. He closed down his Atlanta location. Oh, the Atlanta location. Uh huh. Yeah, it's they a, it's still have that same Jamaican Chinese chef. Is she down there in Miami? Wong, chef Wong. Yes. So no, Chef Natasha Wong. Shout out to her. So no, Chef Wong does not work with Peter anymore. They had a falling out child about some money. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the Chef Aramis, who he got to come in and do his menu at this one, is just equally as good. The food's equally as good. And mm -hmm. they did take a lot of Chef Wong's recipes from the Atlanta one. Down. Is he paying you to promote this restaurant? <laughs> I think he paying you. Because I'm telling you, the way you be posting the plates and stuff, uh -huh. I'm like, you be licking your fingers and stuff. You don't have to cut me a check. Because <laughs> fucking Dineva pulls the numbers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But mm -hmm. now, back to um this uh ooh, this sad situation. Yeah. Um, you know how Mama jumped in my comments on uh, oh, Mama. Arian Curry's mom. So, and what'd she say? Oh, oh yeah, she told you off, right? When I put the coleslaw clip up there, I put a little snippet of my video on, on Instagram, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said, sometimes you can basically work hard and prepare your child as best you can, and you send them out to the world, but there's always some big bad wolf around the corner lurking to take advantage of them. She's young, yeah, she's young, and hopefully she'll grow from this. Um, but coleslaw gonna be her own meal one day. Trust that she good over here. And so everybody was like, "So oh, it sounds right. like her mom is like, you know, encouraging her, the bullshit." It's You know, it, it it it's funny because one thing my daddy told me one time. He said, "Even if you a murderer, I still gotta love you." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and so, of course, that woman is going to love her daughter. I'm not even mad at her for loving her daughter, but it honestly. It is kind of a reflection of you because what did you teach her that this behavior is okay? And I was going to tell you because a lot of times when you see moms like that that will encourage their daughters or support them, it's because they've been mistresses too. Right. Exactly. It's learned behavior. It's, it is a learned behavior because I'll be there. Like, I can't never go home and tell my mama, oh, I'm a mistress. Girl. What? <laughs> oh, you better. Tell your mistress ass on out this door. Or better yet, and I'm having a baby from a married man. Right. And I've been going five years. My mama would have made the appointment for me. You know what's so sad, though? <laughs> and it's not the child's fault. Yeah, it's not. But it's sad that this child is coming into this world like under this. These and under these circumstances. It's yeah. not the child's fault. But it's, and it's so public. Everybody knows about it. There's a lot of shame attached to it. Every time they Google the mother's name, this is going to come up. And they have to read about it one day. And with Hawkville being so small, I know when she goes to the store, people they are like, yes, go right there. They stare. I would hate that. I Girl, know she using Amazon. She knows she using Amazon cart. Instacart. <laughs> Amazon Fresh. I would be. I do it because people be bothering me in the grocery store. I just go on and add it to my cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, um, it is. And you know, I. I I don't know. It's just bad, you know, because I was an outside child. 
Mm-hmm. You know, my dad had my mom pregnant and his wife pregnant at the same time. But the difference is my mom did not know that my daddy was in a situation. So when she found out, she was done. You know, she went out the job corps and, you know, married my sister's father. Who I can say. But it's hard. I'm sorry, this echo. But it's hard. Uh, c- coming up as an outside child because you you start to question yourself, you question your foundation. Like, why were my brothers and sisters accepted by my dad, and why I couldn't see him? And it really does something to your psyche. Like, as a woman, like you feel like you're not worthy, or maybe you were a mistake and stuff like that. And so, I just really feel for the baby because. The baby is going to have those questions. It don't matter how much a mom loved their kid. They're always going to have questions about where's dad? Why don't my dad love me? Why don't we have the same dynamic as other parents and and, and other kids do with their mothers and fathers? You know what I'm saying? So it it does do a toll. And I just kind of, you know, my prayers are really out to the baby. I don't wish no child at, at all in that situation. Now, do you think Mel is going to allow Arion and the baby to be a part of the other children's lives? No. Mm. And I don't blame well, The thing about it is, I don't know that that's not her call to make because at the end of the day, when he when the kids are with the father, there's nothing she can do. Well, she can say, "Don't bring that girl around." She you can. She can do. make it real <laughs> difficult. For right. her. I mean, you can say it. You can say it, but if this is who I'm moving my life on with. And this is who I'm with. I don't think he'll do it because Martell is going to have to answer questions. Right. He's having his kids are going to have questions. And Martell doesn't strike me as a type to want to take accountability for shit. No, he's going to play them like they're stupid. He's going to be like, I don't know, it's your cousin. So that he is going to grow up thinking that this baby, their cousin, the entire time. No, he's, so, he's so cocky that he's probably not going to answer a question because he's going to feel like he doesn't have to. How do you explain to your four kids that you now have a new brother here? Here he is, your new brother. Huh? You don't. You just tell them you, this is your new brother from your new mommy. And then you go in there and pour a glass of cereal. And you and you leave them to be confused. And That's too much. come up with whatever, you know. They mama, they, they, mama, they mama would tell them. I don't, you know what's so funny is, you know, I've seen women in this situation a lot, especially the women who get cheated on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, their kids see them hurt and they don't want to tell their kids. They don't want to feel as if they're a failure. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't want, you know. I'm going to tell you part two of that problem and why I, I am personally an advocate of the children being in each other's lives. To the point that you made, Tasha, you don't want to create a situation where this other child is like, well, why did these kids get this and I didn't get that? Or right. kids mm-hmm. have this great life and I'm this bastard child over here in the corner. It is not the child's fault. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's literally, it, if they decide to reconcile or not, like Rashida did a really good is a prime example of what you do if you gonna stay with a man. That ain't that, that ain't that damn baby. That baby that that's not true. Oh, that's not how that's what no, baby. that's not his baby. They, no, that's Rod. <laughs> that's Rod's baby. Those are facts. Oh. They did all that for a storyline. They did all that for a storyline. Oh, they got that girl goodness. out of Wet Willy. She was already pregnant by Rod. Rod had a relationship with uh, what's uh Stevie J's ex baby mama Mimi. So Mimi thought Kurt was like, I look, I need a check. It was his only income coming in. That record label D Block wasn't doing nothing. And so they paid Jasmine a few grand wow. to say that the baby was his. He had never slept with that girl. And you can look at the baby and tell us Rod. Rod always with the baby. And she did. That's some trifling low down she did shit. It. That's why she got her so called fame. But I heard she on OnlyFans. And I, I mean, she's a pretty girl, but you know. Kurt never touched that girl. Gotcha. Well, that makes mm. me feel a little better. He had another uh, actual mistress whose name is Fanny. Bought her a house and everything. But he needed mm. that check because he was sustaining two households. Rashida. Because you know this. He'll never give Rashida no money. If she said, I want a store, he'll go get the store. Mm-hmm. He won't sit down and let her look at the paperwork. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm. Yeah, he's always been like that. He's always took care of Rashida ever since he adopted her when she was seventeen. But that's another story. Oh my goodness! 
Oh my goodness, this was a lot. And I am just so happy I was able to get three of the finest YouTubers, um, tea spillers, wine spillers. <laughs> I'm so happy you finally came to YouTube, Monica. How long I've been telling you to get your ass over here? Yeah, you have. You really, really have. <laughs> you really, really have. And I'm glad to be here. Listen, y'all, this has been informative. Um, any parting words? Y'all just know? stay black. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> we vote. They did we it. Vote. They voted. Don't forget to vote. Uh, vote. No, y'all, you know, you know, I love y'all. Y'all can find me all places, YouTube. Um, Monica, thank you for having me. I love when we can get together and have these kind of conversations. I think it's not only important for the culture, but also important just for black YouTube to see us mm. you know, all working together doing I things. Love that. So I, I, I love that. I hope that we can continue. Yeah to forge these relationships and, and kind of cross promote one another across our channels in the future. I love that. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. And I, I'm just humbled to just be sitting with two pioneers. Cause Monica, you've been in the game a long time, a mm -hmm. long time. Like I was reading your blog for years and, and funky, you know, I, I learned a lot from you. I learned what to do and what not to do. And I'm still learning. And so I, it's just an honor to just be a student and just be able to just, you know, share what I've learned from both of you guys. So thank you. Likewise. And thank you to everyone watching as well, too. <laughs> Tasha, huh? If you're not following Tasha, I don't know what you're doing, but Tasha, go ahead and tell everyone how they can reach you. Oh, okay. unwind with Tasha K on every single social media platform there is. Unwind with Tasha K. So, yes. Y'all are beautiful. I just want to say thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I appreciate y'all so much. We need to do this again. We really do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Really you do. know, we got a podcast with some of the dopest creators. Woo! Mm. You, know, you, you, know, you know a bitch know how to get the sponsors over too. Now. I have Verizon oh. sitting there opening up the damn shots. No. Oh. Let's, Congratulations. Let's oh. okay. I'm so proud you know, of you. We can all do a podcast remotely. There it is. Mm -hmm. I am All so right. proud of you, sis, and everything you're doing. Daniva, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in.